It's an academic and applied discipline that involves the scientific study of mental functions and behaviors. Or to put it more simply, today we're gonna talk about your mind. This is psychology. How many friends can you have? Or more specifically, is there a limit to the number of people that you can maintain a stable social relationship with? These are relationships where you know who the person is and you know how each person relates to every other person in the group. And no, not Facebook friends. Turns out that there is a limit, would be pretty awkward if I brought this up otherwise. It's something called Dunbar's number and the limit is 150 people. Ever wondered why? Why do you want things? Why do you do things? Why do you feel the way you do about certain things? Why do you keep on living? Turns out that psychology more or less has the answer to all of these questions. Enter the world of dopamine. Dopamine was discovered in Sweden in 1958 and is created in various parts of our brains. It's critical in all sorts of brain functions such as thinking, moving, sleeping, mood, attention, motivation, seeking and reward. Basically, in its simplest form, dopamine is a want system. It is what keeps us motivated to move through the world world, learn and survive. Research on rats, for example, show that if you destroy dopamine neurons, rats can still walk, chew and swallow, but will starve to death even when food is right next to them. They have basically lost all desire to eat. Take this example, you're walking through a public square, you're looking around and suddenly see a friend in the crowd. The friend recognizes you, but even though you for a moment is looking right at him, you do not recognize him. Only when your friend stops and says hello, do you realize you just looked right at him and somehow you still missed it. This is because you can only think of one thing at a time. You cannot mentally focus on more than one task, no matter how good you might think you are at multitasking. People are capable of switching between several tasks very quickly though, which can create the illusion of multitasking. We can also learn to do something physical while focusing on another mental task, such as walking and talking on the phone at the same time. However, a study was done with these very circumstances which made it clear that people who talk on their phone while walking bump into other people much more and doesn't really notice and or remember things happening around them. This phenomenon is called inattentional blindness. If I asked you to draw an object, any object at all, what perspective would you draw that object in? From above? From the side? From below? Turns out that most people would end up drawing it like this, at a somewhat tilted angle as if you were slightly above the object looking down. It's called the canonical perspective. The interesting thing is that it seems to apply to almost everything, even objects you wouldn't normally see in this top-down type of perspective, such as a truck or a horse. And when you take a photograph, you're also most likely to take it from this perspective, no matter if you're aware of it or not. We can't really explain why this is exactly, it seems people just like and prefer to view things this way. Some of you watching this might see yourself as a quite logical, self-aware type of person. I know I do. So when you make a somewhat larger decision, you carefully think it through and consider everything before making up your mind. But research shows that although you want to think that your decision making is a conscious, deliberate process, it's not. For example, let's say you want to buy a new TV. You consider the size of the TV that works best in your room, the range of TV brands you're willing to buy from, price versus quality, whether you should get a Blu-ray player and so on and so on. But the things that has the biggest impact on what TV you end up buying happens unconsciously. Things such as what are most other people buying, or am I the type of person who always has the newest technology, or am I more known to go for shock value like getting a 120 inch TV. This is why we can sometimes feel like we know what is the right thing to do, as in trusting your gut, because unconsciously you've already made up your mind. 
Have you ever been in a situation where you're, for example, listening to someone explaining something or showing you how to do something and without thinking about it, you start to imitate those movements? Whether you have or not, it's something our brains learn to do from a very early age. Just watching other people doing stuff causes some of the same neurons in your brain to fire as if you were actually doing those same things yourself. These are appropriately called mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. Mirror, 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 mirror. The same thing happens with empathy. When you try to empathize with someone, we are literally experience what others are feeling through these mirror neurons. Mirror, 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 mirror. If you want someone to try something new and different, it will work best if you make them happy first. Studies have shown that when people are sad or scared, they want what is familiar. But when we're happy, we're much more likely to try something new and are not as concerned of what is and isn't familiar. This ties in with the fact that when we're sad or scared, we feel much more vulnerable compared to when we're happy and thus you might feel that you need to protect yourself even if that new thing you're scared of is a new type of cereal. Among my family and friends, I wouldn't say I'm really known to have the best or most accurate memory all of the time, but here is something I can at least use in my own defense. Memories are not stored like a movie or image like it would be on a hard drive that is ready for use whenever you need it. Instead, memories are actually reconstructed every single time we think of them. But this reconstruction sometimes gets similar events mixed up and sometimes even makes stuff up. For example, imagine this, if you spend time with the same friend at school almost every day, when you remember something from a day where he wasn't actually there, the reconstructed memory might think he was because he usually is. To you, that memory makes total sense and it will seem just as real as the original event. So in a sense, your brain reconstructs the memory you're trying to remember in the way it thinks would be most logical, but not necessarily the most accurate. This is why the testimony of eyewitnesses at crime scenes can many times differ greatly. One thing to keep in mind about, uh, well, everything I've talked about in this video and a lot of the research you'll find about psychology overall, is that most of it is being tested on Western audiences. By Western I mainly mean the US and Europe. Why this matter is because another study showed that the way we think is different depending on what culture we come from. It showed for example that when presenting different images to people around the world, people from Asia focused on the surroundings and the things in the backgrounds while people from the west focused on the main or dominant foreground object. And looking at the brain patterns while performing several of these tests revealed that our way of thinking is very different in many ways. The point is that the study revealed that not only are our cultures different, but because of our culture we also think differently. No wonder people can't get along. For those of you who's watched my top 10 facts series for some time now, might have noticed a certain structure of how I present my content. I usually, but not always, begin with a fact that is short and just basic. The facts in the middle are somewhat random and then I end the video with what I think will be most fascinating or the most complex. And there's actually a reason why I do this, and it's something called progressive disclosure. This is a fancy term that is used in the field of psychology to refer to providing information in increasing chunks of size and complexity. We can only process a small amount of information at a time, and thus we actually prefer when, for example, text is divided into paragraphs compared to just a wall of text. 